Welcome to People Doing Good for Others. This is People Doing Good for Others, and I'm Gary York, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're going to honor and celebrate the life of an individual who's truly making a difference in our communities, who has the nice story, who's unique in uh, talent, and thank you for being with us. And her name is Elena Grit, and she's the uh, head decorator at Dom Bakeries over on D Street. She's a native of Wilkes, graduate of Wilkes Central High School, where she was a director or the publisher of their yearbook. And so here we go with Elena Grit and her uh, mastery as a cake decorator. So good morning to you, my friend. Good morning. Uh, this interest you have in being a, a professional decorator, uh, how'd that happen? So as you mentioned, I was the editor of the yearbook. And um, my love for the arts kind of grew from there. Um, and I just channel all of my creative passion into cakes. Now, how about the back up to being the editor of the yearbook? Uh, how'd you get involved in that? So I had Mr. Elledge as... Oh, I know him well. Yes as I believe it was my English teacher. That's been a long time ago. Yep. But I believe he was my English teacher, and, but he was also the yearbook teacher. He was. Um, and I really liked him. And so I just kind oh, of Oh, how wonderful. Fell. I understand that. Yes, yes. Yep. So you just kind of transitioned. One thing led to another. Yes, I just signed up for yearbook class, and I think you had to be voted, or Mr. Elledge had to to get you into that spot. So I'm not the sure editor, you were the top person in, in that group. So I think there were two editors, um, maybe three, but we all worked beside of each other and had right. the most responsibilities. Okay. So uh, go ahead with uh, how that transitioned into a cake decorator. So I graduated from Surrey Community College with a graphic design degree um, and from there, I went to Winston to work as a graphic designer and just learned that being behind a computer um, wasn't for me and I wanted to be more hands-on. Um, and I already had the cake decorating experience um, and just kind of figured out that I wanted to use my graphic design knowledge or my artistic knowledge to give people okay. what they wanted Elena to Elena Grit, um, so you worked at Walmart. Yes. Is your first experience with cakes? Is that well, I worked at Lowe's Foods okay. in the deli and bakery, um, and I was the closer. So people would come in at night and wanted um, their cakes written on, like Happy Birthday and a name. And so I, I wrote on cakes and knew that I had somewhat of an interest, but that's all that I knew. So then Walmart was hiring for a cake decorator, went to Walmart, and right there, it was my first experience actually decorating a cake. Yes. Let's talk for a minute about the actual hands-on doing. Mm -hmm. uh, give us some idea of, of the methodology or the how things work in, a, say, in a time frame of... Uh, First you do this, and then you do that. Okay. Do, we do that for us. Okay, so the first step is getting the order. Have the customer reach out to you, receive the order. The second step is to bake it to what they want. Um, and then once you have the cakes baked, you've got to let them cool off, then you get them. Um, cool off? Cool off, yes. You can't decorate a hot cake. <laughs> well, so good. after they come out of the oven, um, you let them cool to room temperature, and then um, you can freeze them to give it a nice, um, if you freeze the cake, it doesn't crumb as much, um, but only keep it in there for about 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, so then you can level the cakes off to make them um, level once you ice them. 
So you've got to cut the tops of the cakes off and then stack or just lay them on the sheet board um, and then you ice it um, and then decorate it and box it up and then the customer comes and gets it. Okay. Uh, on one of my visits to Don Bakers, mm -hmm. uh, you were taking an order. Yes. Uh, two ladies. Yes. And I was so inspired by what the the concentration that you were given, the questions and the listening, share that with us. So when you take an order, you want to make sure that you get as many details as possible. Um, details. Details, 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 details. So if I don't take an order, and sometimes I don't because the, the girls up front um, take orders for me, but they'll just say, eight inch double layer round buttercream icing with happy birthday. And so I get that order and I'm like, okay, what <laughs> colors do they want? What kind of decorations do they want? A cake with just happy birthday written on it is very. So you plain, also so. are involved in training the staff that might take an order for you. So I have a very detailed order form that I made that in hopes it gets them giving me all the sure. details I need. But sure. sometimes customers come in and have no idea what they want. They just know they want a happy birthday cake. So it makes it difficult for me um, if I don't have those details. And so that's why when I take an order, I'm very specific on getting everything that I need to make sure the customer is happy in the end. Uh, some of the questions, could you share with us some of the questions you might have yeah. uh, shared with those ladies last week. So uh, the first question is how many people you need to serve um, because we do a variety of different cake sizes. We do six inches, six inch rounds to 12 inch rounds. So six inch serves six to eight and the 12 inch can serve 30 to 35. So it really just depends how many people you need the cake to serve. Um, and then you ask what flavor they want. At Dom's, we are a full-service bakery. We bake everything in-house. So the flavors are endless, and that kind of overwhelms endless. people. Yes, My they're goodness. endless. Yes, we could do about any kind of cake flavor you want. So it's very um, important to get what kind of flavor they want their cake. What's the most popular? Um, probably vanilla. Vanilla, okay. <laughs> yeah, All because right. when you're having a party, um, you don't know what other people like. So people just tend to stay on the safe side and get vanilla. That's yeah. our most popular, but I mean, chocolate marble, red velvet, those are on up there too. Carrot cake? Not a lot of people want carrot cake, but we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> if we can think it or imagine it, you can do it. Yes. So let's go back to this order uh, again. Uh, some more questions, if you will, uh, Ms. Britt. Okay. So what kind of icing you want? We've got vanilla buttercream, chocolate buttercream, cream cheese, whipped, um, and we can flavor all of those. So um, the icing is important. And then um, what colors they want on the cake, what they want written on the cake, um, if they want anything drawn on the cake, any cake toppers, pretty much how they want it decorated is the next question. And a lot of the times, if people don't know, I pull up Google and just search and let them see an example of what they want, and that gives me some inspiration. Wow. Yes. Um, we also discussed uh, uh, through Dave Barricklow that you, you're you not the baker. There's a, another person that is a great um, relationship because you're doing exactly what you want to do. Yes. And they bring the cakes and you decorate them. Tell yes. us how does that work? So I make a bake list. Um, the bake is done during the night. Um, and so I make a bake list for the next day of what I need. So I leave a list of all the flavors, what sizes, um, and then Emmanuel comes in and at nighttime he bakes everything and then in the morning I come and it's all there for me. Wow. He also does the icing. So he hey, makes all okay. the icing. Uh, tell us about your icing. You, you mentioned to me it's a different flavor, was it? or? So you can do different flavors. So we make our vanilla buttercream. Bu and buttercream. Buttercream, yes, and cream cheese icing. So you can flavor it with anything. You can flavor it with strawberry, chocolate. Um, you can do about anything to put flavoring in there. Okay. Uh, so the next... Uh, 
You mentioned cupcakes being a very popular part of, of what we offer at Don Bakery's. Tell, talk about the cupcakes. So cupcakes are one of my favorites. Um, I like to do cupcakes because I guess they're fast and you can get them out there, but there's so many different techniques of how to ice cupcakes. Um, it's, it's one of my favorites. Wow. Yeah, and they're getting very more popular um, with weddings. A lot of people are just getting a small cake and then serving cupcakes to all of their guests so you don't have to actually cut like a three or four tiered cake. It's very simple for a cupcake or for a guest just to grab a cupcake. Okay. Uh, share with us, uh, Ms. Grit, the, the talent that you have that you think is, lends itself to as uh, Dave Barraclow says, you're the best he's ever seen. And I just, I, when I heard that, I said, we, we must bring her on the show. Yes, yeah, so I don't necessarily think I'm the best, but um, my experience definitely plays a role in that. I've been decorating for 11 years now. Um, and another cool thing um, is I don't work with fondant at all. Um, I only work with buttercream icing. Um, and so I feel like with my artistic abilities, I'm able to recreate stuff that is fondant, but actually use buttercream icing. Um, and if I can't, then there's always things you can buy online. Um, I make custom cake toppers. So there's always ways around doing a buttercream cake when you really like the design aspects of a fondant cake. Okay. Um. From there, uh, you say we also have uh, standard cakes that you have in the cooler. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, that availability, if you will. So the thing behind the refrigerated case is kind of funny. When we first opened, um, I told Dave we need a refrigerated case because cream cheese, whipped icing, it won't keep in just a standard display floor, floor case. So I told him I really want a refrigerated case. And he recently, probably about two months ago, got me one. Now, <laughs> what is that? A refrigerated case. Refrigerated case. Yes, he got me one <laughs> after I've been asking for it for two years. Okay. Um, and we keep all kinds of cakes in there, different flavors. We sell them by the slice. We sell them by the whole cake. That's where we keep our cupcakes. And it keeps the cakes a lot fresher. Okay. Um, so we've got, we always have something available um, in that case. What is the most popular item that would come through your area? So the case when people walk in and buy it or like a... Well, just what a, a, at this in volume, the most popular item that Don Bakers is doing right now. Probably a red velvet cake with honey bun, or red velvet cake with cream cheese icing or the honey bun. Honey buns. Yes. Honey wow. bun is a recipe that I used, my mom used when I was young. Yes. Really? Yes. So you look, you, your experience goes a long way back. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So at home, you and your mom used to bake together. And my grandma. And your yes. grandmother. Yes. Now, what's in a honey bun? Honey bun is like a vanilla or yellow batter with cinnamon, brown sugar, and pecans in it. It's really tasty. So you brought that um, recipe from home? Yes. Wow, okay. Yep. Uh, when we are training the other, the associates that might take an order when you're not there, or um, go through the training regimen, if, if you will, about uh, the emphasis to a person taking the order, what were the, some of the questions you want to make sure we ask? Definitely what size. Size. What flavor. Flavor. And I think most importantly, what time and date they need the cake. <laughs> if those are left off, then I have no idea. So. Time and date. Time and date is important. So how, um, uh, do we need a couple of days to get ready, or what if, what if I call at two o'clock this afternoon and say I need it at four? Could you do it? No. No. Unless um, we had some spare cakes that I hadn't decorated for the case yet. Um, that 
was the flavor you wanted. So we are very, we, we bake everything fresh. Fresh so, is, is where it starts. Yes. So we bake all of our stuff in-house to order. Scratch. No, scratch, including the wow. icing. Nothing is kept in our freezer to pull out um, when we need it. So that's why it's important to give at least a 24-hour notice. A 48 is even better. Okay. A uh, schedule for you when you will come in and spend so many hours a day, what, what would be a normal day for you? So I, ha I have three kids. Okay. So I, when me and Dave um, first met, it was very important to me that I was able to spend time with my family. Um, and he, wow, he honors that. Yes, he honors that. Um, so my, my days really, I don't have set hours. I come in and get what needs to be done and then I go get my kids. Okay. Um, so a set now How day, old are your kids? Seven, five, getting ready to be six and two. Okay. So <laughs> the first, the older children are in school? Yes. Normally? Yeah. yeah. Well, I homeschooled all last year due to COVID. So I had them, um, and I would go to work at seven in the morning, sometimes eight, and get off at 12, pick them up, homeschool them until four or five, and then wow. went on with the rest of my day. So yeah. Mm. So Tell I, us about uh, homeschool mothers. How, how does the, <laughs> tell us a little bit about I that. I think that'd be a good, uh, I don't think it's for me. The kids will be <laughs> going to school next year. Um, but it was a good opportunity to spend more time with them. Um, I learned a lot about them. I learned a lot about myself. Um, I would not make a good teacher for children. Okay. But I think it's hard also when you're homeschooling your children. Um, they tend not to listen to their parents as much as they would listen to their teacher. Um, and I oh found that goodness. in a lot of homeschool groups. So, and when I was homeschooling, she was six. She had just turned seven. So six and five-year-old, the two-year-old was always around two. So that made it a little bit more difficult. But we all learned, um, and they're ready for the next grade. So it's accomplishment. All right, I want to switch gears. Okay. Tell us about Dave. Dave. Barrick Lowe. He came here kind of following children and grandchildren and yes. um, tell us about and uh, his wife Bronwyn. Bronwyn. I told um, Bronwyn I said they asked me who Dave Barraclo was and I said I'm going to say I don't know who Dave is I know who Bronwyn is <laughs> because <laughs> apparently Dave didn't mention Bronwyn in his interview and Bronwyn's part owner too so me, Bronwyn's like a second mother. She's, she thanked me the other day and made me feel so good about it. She said, you know, you've really helped our, our company here. And wow, that was a, a nice feeling. Yes. Yeah. So I love Bronwyn. I love Dave. Um, me and Bronwyn have more of a friendship than me and Dave are kind of blunt towards each other you could tell us about the way. interview the first day you walked in did <laughs> so you first, have an appointment or no so i was <laughs> i had a um bakery in west park it was just somewhere i baked out of so someone could come people could come and meet me and not have to go to my house because there was a lot of people i didn't know and i didn't feel comfortable oh, yeah, with them sure. coming to my house yep so i would have to go out and meet them four or five times on a saturday four different times to meet four different people um and so I got this building in West Park and it was just getting to be a little overwhelming. Um, I was having to turn down more orders than I was taking because I was having to do it all. I was having to communicate, go grocery shopping, bake it, make the icing, decorate it, meet people. And it was just becoming my whole life. Um, right. And I wasn't spending enough time with my kids. So um, when I saw this building going up and then I saw the words Dom Bakeries on the side, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go introduce myself. An answer to my prayer. Yes. So I walked in when they were doing construction. Um, they were just running around. It wasn't even anything then. Um, it, it was barely off the ground getting started. And I said, I showed them some of my work, and I expressed to them why I wanted to stop doing it on my own, um, that I wanted to spend more time with my families. I wanted off Saturdays except for wedding cakes um, and they were like, yes, because Bronwyn thought she was going to have to decorate everything. 
um, because they didn't have a cake decorator. So they said I was an answer. So you've prayer. been there from the moment they opened? Before they opened. Before they opened. <laughs> yes, okay. I was doing cakes out of there before we even opened. Okay. I'd moved all my stuff up there and was still taking clients of mine from Elena's Bakery, um, but they were letting me use their space. Wow. Yep. So they said that I was an answered prayer, but they were an answered prayer as well. So both of it was the answer to prayer. Yes. Both parties. Yes. Boy, that's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, so tell us about the interview. Did we finish that? or t- 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 your, uh, your relationship with Dave is, uh, of course, professional. Yes. And uh, tell us about, as a, a leader, the Dave Barraclow that you know. Yes, Dave um, is very business oriented, um, as I am too. So we got along on that aspect. Um, and he is just an awesome person. He he's like a father figure too, because if I, I'm like his little kid, I'm like Dave, I need this, I need this, and he just gets it for me, and it's there. So he's oh he's, father figure. Yes, he's very awesome. Good. Yep. Good. Now <clears throat> you have an understudy. Abby. Yes. And uh, we found incredible uh, talent in her. Uh, Talk about how that happened and the training and just really get into developing a a person that can handle not as well maybe, but uh, when you're not there, (laughs) when you need to be with your children that she can take over. Just talk about that. Yes. So Abby um, was hired, and she was working up front with the pizza, um, customer service, the deli. Um, And her sister is Rachel, who is one of our managers. And she came over, and she was like, yeah, my sister loves to paint. And then in my head, I was like, okay, (laughs) here we go. Somebody who's artistic. Um, And so I asked her would you have an interest in learning how to decorate? And she was like, absolutely. So um, after, I've, I've had several people who have been under studies before, but they've always, it wasn't their passion. It was something that they just wanted to learn how to do, and then they were going to go do something else in their life. Um, so I, it takes oh a lot of, goodness. it takes a lot of time to invest into someone and actually show them the skills that are needed um, and so with Abby, I found that my time would be used wisely if I did it invest it in her. So we, um, she was decorating cupcakes within the first two days that she was training with me. And the people up front couldn't tell if it was my work or her work. So I was, I was very pleased with that. And then from there, um, how I like to train people is I give them a piece of styrofoam, like a circle styrofoam that kind of resembles what a cake would be like. So you can't mess up the cake. Um, It's just a piece of styrofoam. So you give them a piece of styrofoam, the icing bag, and I would show Abby how I did it. And here you go. If you have any questions, you can ask me um, because there are so many different techniques in decorating. And so learning your own technique um, and what works best for you is ideal. So I like to just be that person. So it's, it's not cookie cutter then. It's like every person has an individual style. Yes. So I use a quick <coughs> icer, which is like a big metal tip that goes into a pastry bag, put my icing in there, and it goes on pretty smooth. So all I have to do is is smooth it out, get the lines away, and then it's done. Dave, on the other hand, will get a spatula and a lot of the older generation does decorate that way. I worked with a lady at Lowe's Foods, Geraldine, who used a spatula. It's just something that they like to do. They've never let's heard put of the icing. Let's put in the icing on the cake with the, the spatula. Icing. Yes, and so that's how Dave does it, if you ever see him. Um, but Abby, Abby's adapted to my way, um, and so she likes doing the now quick icing. That's the, the bag full of the icing yes. and a tip on it or something. Yep. Is that it? Yep. Describe it uh, better than I did. Okay, so it's like a, a metal line yep. tip, 
and it's probably two inches and you just put it in the pastry bag, put the icing in there and then just go around the sides and it takes two swipes for a double layer and your icing's on the cake and then you go around the top in two circles and then you just smooth it out. Wow. I think mm. it's a whole lot yeah. easier than a spatula method, but if that's what you were taught to do and that's what works for you, then yeah. it's what works. I think you also mentioned that uh, she took it upon herself to go to YouTube or somewhere? Yes, okay, so. Tell, <laughs> tell us about that. I, roses were the hardest thing I learned how to do with buttercream roses. icing. Roses. Roses. Roses with icing. Um, it was, and everybody has their own technique doing roses too, so you've got to find what works for you. Well, one day she said, can I try a rose? And I'm like, sure. So I showed her how I did it. She took it upon herself and just got the rose nail and did it how she saw it done on YouTube. She told me she had watched YouTube, and I was like, there you go. There's your rose. So she did a rose the first time she tried it. And it took me probably two weeks of trying nonstop to learn how to do one. So Elena, my yes. goodness. Yes. So she's So awesome. she's a self starter too. Oh yes. And I went on um, vacation with my family two weeks ago and she was there um, every day in my spot filling up the case um, up front full of slices and cakes for sale, and she did awesome. She didn't have any direction. I just told her, hey, you need to fill that up, and it was filled. So wow. she's great. And I want to compliment your being selfless to let, uh, you know, it's kind of a magic, that I'm sure, that you do, and it's a tremendous talent, but are willing to, to train that. Well, it's honestly a blessing to me just because I was having to turn down so many orders because I was having to keep the case stocked so when people would just walk in, it wouldn't be just an empty case. So that we do about 25 cakes a week um, in that case up front. And so 25 cakes on top of all the orders I was getting, it's too much for one person to handle unless you just sleep there and just live there all all day so um it's actually a blessing that she can come in and that's going to be um, her responsibility is filling that um, case cake or the cake case up and it's a blessing uh, i've i hear in our conversation today that uh, you're uh, to put family first and yes. worshiping god and family and and then this is uh I guess a worthy cause, you know, the yes. one, two, three, four, but these can be in place if you have some help. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. And I'm also inspired to know that Dave can do all of it. He can. He's a master certified license. I don't know what that is, yeah. but master baker and decorator, cake decorator. Uh, your career, it, I can sense the fulfillment in it, uh, you're uh, at ease and as he said, you're the best. And I, I like that, I, that's inspiring. So tell us uh, as we uh, kind of wrap things up today about your life and the blessings of when the, the, the Dom Bakers came to town, that this is something that can make your life fulfilling. Yes. So. When Dom's came in town, um, I was really overworked and I enjoyed um, what I did, but it was to a point where I was just getting overwhelmed, wasn't spending enough time with my children because every Saturday I was off doing something and my husband works Monday through Friday. So on Saturdays, it needs to be family time. So when Dave, um, Dave completely understood, he's a family man as well, he has four kids, so he understands where a young mom can be coming from with three young children, um, that my family does come first, and I've made that very clear, um, and they respected that from day one. Um, and on Saturdays, if I have to work, it's to deliver a wedding cake, and I'm gone maybe two or three hours. Um, but it was just really nice, and it's the family environment that Don Bakeries brings. Um, everybody there is like family. Um, 
in the beginning it was a little rough, but we we all got it figured out and um, give and take. Yes, I would. I don't think anybody would trade it for anything now. Um, it's very family How wonderful. Oriented. Yes. Well, I'm glad that uh, that there was a connection, a relationship developed when you walked in the door. That this yes. is where I'm supposed to be, and the Barrack Lowe's is saying this is the person we need to lead this part of our company. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. Thank you for being with us today. Yes. I knew this would be exciting and uh, it's very fulfilling too. Yes, thank you for having yeah. me. <clears throat> Ms. Elena Grit, a professional cake decorator at Don Baker's on uh, D Street in North Wilkesboro, the Barraclo family of Christians that uh, are tremendous leaders who have a sense of uh, responsibility to the community and that uh, these wonderful made from fresh everyday products available in our community and we've learned today about how a person can take artistic ability and turn it into uh, a, a masterpiece if you will. Thank you for being with us today and again Ms. Elena Grit from Dom Bakers what a wonderful experience for us to, to live, to learn, and to, to grow, and to see how uh, these wonderful talents come together for a wonderful product. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.